prove a uh, part of the extreme value theorem here. This is just a common sort of homework, pro homework problem in analysis or advanced calc and probably in some math econ stuff. So there's, there's a few different ways you'll see the extreme value theorem stated. The, the one we're doing today is just that a continuous, a, fun a continuous function defined on a compact set is um, going to attain its max and its min. So we're going to prove the minimum version of this. So what we're trying to show is um, that if A is compact and F from A to R is continuous, that there exists an A such that F of A equals the infimum of the function on A. So there's a handful of ways you could do this that rely on different stuff. Um, I'm just going to do one way, which, uh, you know, I'm sure there's cleaner ways. I'm sure there's longer ways. But I'm going to do it by proving two lemmas. First, that compact sets contain their infima. And the second lemma, that if f is continuous on a compact set, then f of that set, f of a, the function, the things that get mapped into by that function is compact. So the first one, the claim is that compact sets contain their imps. So we'll let A be compact. And by definition, this means that it's closed and bounded. Since it's bounded, the infimum exists. This is another result that, you know, is pretty easy to prove. So we'll let beta equal the inf of A. And then just using sort of the, the epsilon theorem or the epsilon definition for infima, this tells us that for any n, we have that beta plus 1 over n is going to be greater than a sub n, which is going to be elements of a, which in turn is greater than or equal to beta. So this, if, if you haven't seen this, this is just saying that if beta really is the inf, then if you add anything to beta, there must be some element of a that's between them. Now, because we're using just n here, and it's an index on our a sub n's, we could just take the limit of this whole thing as n goes to infinity, which by the squeeze theorem is going to tell us that the limit of a sub n, the sequence of a sub n's, is beta. And because a is compact, meaning it's closed and bounded, it must contain its limit points. So beta must be an A. So this proves that compact sets contain their infima. Now the second claim is that if F is continuous on a compact set A, then F of A is compact. So we'll let Xn, the sequence here, be a sequence in F of A. Now, since this whole sequence is a subset of f of a, then for each n, each indexed x, there must exist some corresponding a sub n, such that f of a sub n equals x sub n. This is just what it means. This is just sort of the definition of what's going on with a function, right? If you take elements uh, that are mapped into, then there must be something in the domain that maps into them. So that's all that this is saying, and we're just doing it with sequences here. Now, this is going to form a sequence of these a sub n's. And every one of them is in big A. And because A is compact, there must be a subsequence, a sub n k, that has a limit, a, where the limit is also in the set. And this is just the definition of what it means to be compact. Every sequence in uh, the set A has a convergent subsequence that converges to a limit also in A. And then what we can do is we can match up these A sub n k's with a new sequence, which is a subset of our sequence xn, xnk. So all it is is taking each one of these, each one of these f is going to map into f of a, and it's going to be, it's going to create a subsequence of these xn's. 
and by just the continu the definition of continuity, this um, x and k is going to have the limit f of a. And because a is in the compact set a, f of a is in, ooh, sorry, this is supposed to be little f. So f of a is in this set, f of big A. So that means that for every sequence, we found just an arbitrary sequence in f of A that has a convergent subsequence, xnk, that converges to a point that is in the set, which just means that it's compact. That's the definition of compactness. So when we put these two together, this is going to prove um, our result. So we know A is compact, so claim 2 tells us that f of A is compact. And then because it's bounded, we know that its infimum exists, so we can let lambda equal the inf of f of A. And then by claim 1, the first lemma we proved, lambda must be in f of A. So just by definition, if, if it's in f of A, that means there's some A in the original set A, such that f of A equals lambda, which is what we wanted to show. So if you have to show this for uh, supremum or the maximum, the proof is just the same. You just flip everything, and yeah, that's it.